Okay. Um, so I will preface this section by saying that the order in which these names are listed is probably the order in which you should prepare for the next exam as far as this section is concerned, if that makes sense. So the first type of model, which is the Bernoulli differential equation, is by far the most important in this section. Mercati, a little bit important. Clairaut, it's just in there, so we're going to basically throw it in there. So it's in rank of one yeah. Pretty much. Okay. So let's start with Bernoulli. Uh, the Bernoulli differential equation looks very similar, actually, to something that we did yesterday with the addition of, yeah, there's this extra factor here. So if you were to take an exam and you had to decide, hmm, how should I do this problem, it's a pretty much, it's a dead giveaway. If you see this, that that's the approach you're going to take, Okay. Yes, but you would not do it with Bernoulli if it was li linear is by far easier. Okay. So now, <clears throat> the idea is that to solve this differential equation, you're going to use a substitution we'll call the new variable w, and it's always going to be y to the 1 minus n. So whatever this power is, and by the way, this exponent can be any real number. Okay, it doesn't have to be an integer. Most of the ones that you'll see are, but this is the substitution that you're going to use. Okay, so as long as you can remember that, then obviously you're going to want to find dw dx. dw dx would just be, uh, let's see, bring the exponent down. Subtract 1 from the exponent, and then dy dx. So that now... What's that? dw dx. We're doing d dx to this whole equation. Looks like y there. Okay, so then now you have a way to bring all this new stuff into the differential equation because here you can get dy dx alone. <clears throat> dy dx will be 1 minus n to the minus 1 y to the positive n <coughs> dw dx if we just manipulate the equation a little bit. So now if I go back to the differential equation and plug all this stuff in, <clears throat> the dy dx will get replaced with this new stuff. So dw dx, 1 minus n to the minus 1. Oh, you know what, that's fine. I don't have to do that. I missed a step, but it's okay. We'll be all right. I'm sure. <laughs> P of x, y. And that's going to equal f of x, y to the n. OK. This is the step I was, didn't do earlier, but we can do it now. If we divide this equation by y to the n, now we get dw dx, 1 minus n to the minus 1, plus p of x. And now when I take y and divide it by y to the n, what is that? y to the 1 minus n. Here we just get f of x. This is nice because... 
this is w. Yay. So now we've completely transformed the equation into a new variable w instead of y. And what I'll also do is put it in the standard linear form. So I'm going to get rid of this coefficient here. So we have dw dx plus 1 over 1 minus n times p of x w. And then uh, it shouldn't be 1 over 1 minus n, should it? It should just be 1 minus n. times f of x. The point being that now this is a linear equation in w. So from here, you solve for w. And then substitute back in the solution. Okay, so really all you have to remember in order to solve a Bernoulli equation, um, what substitution you're going to make, you have to figure out what dw dx is so that you can figure out dy dx, replace it. It should naturally, by what we're doing here, become linear after that, and then it's a pretty easy equation. Okay, so let's, yeah. So let's say we have dy dx minus y equals e to the x y squared. So we should start by letting w equal y to the what? Negative one. It's always 1 minus the exponent. Good. So that means that dw dx will be minus y to the minus 2 dy dx. And now we can isolate dy dx. So that's going to be minus y squared dw dx equals dy dx. So we're pretty much going through the proof process every time. Now we're going to go back, substitute dy dx. So that will be minus y squared dw dx minus y equals e to the x y squared. I'm going to divide by this lead coefficient, negative y squared. So we get dw dx plus y to the minus 1 equals negative e to the x. And the whole point of doing that is that this variable should be, if we've done everything right, what? Should be w, which it is, because that's what we said it was. y, or w was y to the minus 1. So now we have a new differential equation in terms of just w. And here it's a linear equation. So first we find the integrating factor. Mu is e to the 1 dx, right? So then integrating factor is e to the x. E to the x times w. So then, yeah, on the left side, we're going to get the derivative of e to the x times dependent variable w. And then that's going to equal negative e to the 2x, e good. Integrate. So I have e to the x, w. Negative 1 half e to the 2x. Sorry. Uh, plus constant. And then we go back. Here's what I was saying before. We don't want w. We actually wanted y. This is just a procedure to bring it back in now. w was y to the minus 1. <coughs> so 
So we can say y to the minus 1 is going to be negative 1 half e to the x plus c e to the minus x. And if we wanted an explicit solution, we can do the reciprocal and say y is 1 over minus 1 half e to the x plus c e to the minus x. Any questions on Bernoulli and what steps to take? And yes? Um, just a quick question. Why did you integrate with respect to W at any point? Why did I what? Why did you not integrate with respect to W at any point? We didn't need to. Like, what you, what'd you do for him? Can you go just a little bit? What'd you do from the dw dx plus uh, W equals e to the negative x? Factoring. Where did the DW, DX go? You, did you, you don't know what's no. going on in the do you? No. Watch the video. Okay. <laughs> it's magic. It just works. No. There's, the procedure that we learned yesterday is why we can do that. So, okay. instead of re-explaining it, sorry. Um, okay, let's talk about Riccati equations real quick. <clears throat> so, with Riccati equations, we have dy dx equals p of x plus q of x y plus r of x y squared. Again, pretty, it's a very specialized differential equation. It's degree one, and then you have what seems like a quadratic equation for y on the other side. Now, with this, we also know that y1 is a particular solution. So it's not... It's not the solution to the general or to the differential equation, but it's just the solution that we know happens to work. So if we have that, then the idea is that we can find the general solution by calling it y1 plus u. So this particular solution has to be part of the general solution. We just don't know what u is going to be. Okay. But we can kind of do a couple of substitutions to try to figure out what u is, and then once we have that, then we'll have the solution to the Riccati equation. Okay, so the idea is this. If we're using this equation as the, the format for our solution, then we know that dy dx will be dy1 dx plus du dx. <clears throat> so now what we'll do is what we did before we're going to take this new equation for dy dx plug it into the differential equation and we're going to see what happens when we do that so this becomes dy1 dx plus du dx equals and for simplicity I'm going to drop the function notation, so I'm just going to use p, q, and r. So we'll have p plus q, and then y will be y1 plus u plus r times y1 plus u squared. And if I multiply all that out, we get p plus q y1 plus q u plus uh, r y1 squared plus 2RY1U plus RU squared, which is not a question. Okay. With some clever grouping, P, I'm going to put P, Q, 
QY1 and RY1 squared together. Plus, uh, now I'll just factor out a U from the linear terms. So I'll have Q plus 2RY1U. And then that just leaves me with RU squared. Which looks a lot worse than it was when we started, doesn't it? However, this is something. Nobody sees it? The first part is dy. What's dy dx? P plus qy plus ry squared, right? So then dy1 dx would be p plus qy1 plus ry1 squared. So these cancel out. <laughs> so then we have, and if I move everything that should be on the left to the left, I'll have du dx. I'm going to bring the u over. And I'll leave the ru squared on the other side. So now I ask, what kind of equation is this? Now it's a Bernoulli equation. Okay. Are they going to stack on one? So, because we, it, look, this is almost a linear equation in u with the exception of that we have this u squared at the end of the uh, equation, right? So it's just like a Bernoulli equation. Okay, so we're not going to go through the whole thing, but here's essentially what we'll do. We're going to let W equal what? What do we do for Bernoulli? U to the negative 1. It's always U to the 1 minus whatever that exponent is, right? So then this is going to be dw dx equals minus u to the minus 2 du dx, so that minus u squared dw dx equals du dx. So now if I go back, I'll have minus u squared dw dx. I don't know why I was going to do an exponent there. Minus q plus 2 ry1 u equals ru squared. Divide everything by negative u squared, so we get dw dx plus <coughs> q plus 2 ry1 u to the minus 1, but u to the minus 1 is w, right? And now we have a linear equation. So Bernoulli, you make one substitution, make it linear, solve, and then go back and substitute in to figure out the original solution. Riccati equations, you do one substitution, makes it a Bernoulli equation, do another substitution, makes it a linear equation, then you have to go back and solve several times. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If you can memorize this, then you can bypass all the other stuff. Okay, what? Okay. What? So essentially, if you recognize that an equation is a um, Riccati equation, if you can put it in this form, or identify what the P, Q, and actually P doesn't even matter here, does it? It's just Q and R that we need. Okay, then you can rewrite it in this form and then solve it and then go back. Okay. Here's an example. If we see it's a, if it's a yeah. Riccati. Why yes. does the one big block uh, cancel out before? Yeah. I because the, because the, because dy one. According to the differential equation, dy dx is equal to this 
P plus QY plus RY squared. Well, if we replace Y with Y1, now it's P plus QY1 plus RY1 squared, so which is exactly sides. what this equals on the right. And on the left, we have dy1 dx. Yes? Um, so if we were to memorize the last part, would the, would, uh, would the substitution thing for w change, or would that always be u to the negative? It's always going to be u to the minus 1. Always. Always, yeah. Always. Okay, so that's going to be important. If you're going to do all that skipping of the, you know, all the manipulations and substitutions, you need to remember that because you have to work. Once you have what W is, you have to go back and find U. Once you have U, you have to go back and plug that into the original premise for the solution. Okay, so here's what it looks like. It's actually not as bad as it looks. Are you going to show us how to like, go from that? Yeah. Oh. <coughs> I'm not going to do all that work. I already did it once. I'm going to do the shortcut now. dy dx equals minus 4 over x squared minus 1 over xy plus y squared. And we know that one of the solutions that happens to work, the particular solution is 2 over x. Okay, so from here, let's just identify what p, q, and r are. P is Q and R is 1. So here's what I would be okay with. Riccati implies that this can be rewritten as dw dx. And I'll just write the format down so you can see what I'm doing. Q plus 2 RY1 W equals negative R, right? We just proved that. We just have to write the Yep, I'm good with that. So then now we can just replace what needs to be replaced. DW dx will be minus 1 over x plus 2ry1. Let's see. So that'll be so 4 over x. Yeah, we'll, uh, y1. Y1. Oh, y1 is 2 over x, yeah. And then r was 1, so we're just doubling y1. And that equals minus r, so minus 1. See? That's not so bad. Now this is a linear equation. So the integrating factor will be e to the integral of, these can be combined, uh, that's 3 over x dx. So that's e to the 3 ln x, which is the same as ln x cubed, which means that you get x cubed for the integrating factor. So then the left-hand side is going to be the derivative of x cubed and w. And the right-hand side, don't forget we multiply everything by the integrating factor, so that's minus x cubed. Integrate both sides. So we get x cubed w equals minus 1 fourth x to the 4 plus c. And now here's where we start all that back substitution. What was w with this premise? So we go u to the minus 1 for w, put it in. And let's figure out what u is going to be. So well, hold on. I was trying to I looked at what I did here, and I was wondering if there was an easier way to do it. But let's just get rid of the x cubed. So then it's minus 1 fourth x plus cx to the minus 3. So then u would be 1 over all of that. And now that I have u, we know the solution is always y equals y1 plus u. So the general solution, our final answer, is y1, which was 
2 over x, plus this u that I just figured out, the missing piece, 1 over negative 1 fourth x plus cx to the minus 3. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, good. Just enough time to give Claro a little bit of attention. No, this is like way out there. Completely different, not related to linear equations or Bernoulli. So no, there's not going to be like three substitutions that we have to make and a new formula that we have to make. Somebody named this. All right, so Claro equations look something like this. So Claro is y equals x y prime plus f of y prime. Again, this is very specialized. You will know when it's a Claro equation because it needs to look like this, x times a derivative plus what seems like a derivative plugged into some parent function. Okay. The solution is a family of lines I forget who it was. Someone said family of lions? And I was like, that's not what I said. <laughs> and then he ended up drawing lions on his exam. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've um, Okay. And the solution is this. It's Cx plus f of c. We'll verify it in a minute. It's not that bad, move on. Or whoever. Oh, trip. Yeah, blame each other. Uh huh. In addition, uh, this type of differential equation also may possess a singular solution, which is again not obtained from the general solution, but it can be written parametrically as x equals minus f prime of t and y equals f of t minus t f prime of t. This is assuming that f double prime of t is never zero. So as long as f double prime of t is never zero, we will be allowed to find this sing singular solution to this differential equation. Um, it's actually not at all that long to work with. It's just kind of like, oh, this is this new differential equation that we're not going to see too often, but here's how they work. Oh, actually, we should verify that this is going to be the solution for that. So instead of example, quick proof. What is y prime? <coughs> it's just c. Right? What? There's two equations. So then if I plug in y equals xy prime plus f of y prime, what do I get? x c plus f of c, which is Wait, are you kidding me? Why? Wait, it should be on the test. I'm just that was the easiest problem. Well, then. Yes? Why do we call it f of c and not just constant? Because we're just plugging into a constant. Yeah, it's, it's, we're it's not plugging it into a constant. It's a function that, that you're going to plug that value into. But if we just plug one value to the function, well, yeah. So yeah, that'll be a new constant. Um, is C a constant or no? I see. C is a constant. Yes. I see how it's easier to look at from a proof standpoint. It is. It's just easier to look at it that way. But you're right. It is just another constant. Yeah. So here's here's the example I have for you guys. 
if we have y equals xy prime plus one half y prime squared, you look at this equation and you say, oh look, it's Clairo. Yay. <laughs> this is the only equation that looks like that, right? So now, here's what you should do. Identify what f of y prime is. So what is f of y prime in this situation here? F of c. It's 1 half y prime squared. Okay. Now this is for later. So that means f of t can be written as 1 half t squared. So this is for later. Now we say, all right, so the solution was this family, did I get rid of it? Where is it? Oh, it's under. It's y equals cx plus f of c, right? Oops. So y equals cx plus, what's f of c going to be? 1 half c squared. So here is the solution. And since we have f prime, or I'm sorry, here's f of t, right? I guess I should have gone further. What's f prime of t? t. And then f double prime of t is not equal to 0 because we get 1. So that means that there is a singular solution that will also work. What does that mean again, singular solution? A singular solution is a solution that you would not get from the general solution, which is this one. Meaning that you can't like say, well, let's let c equal 2. And that gives us the singular solution. It's like this oddball solution that just happens to also work. Okay. Does that make sense? Kind of like when we, a while back, we had a differential equation. We said, here's the solution, but oh, look, y equals 0 works. Y so equals 2 works. Those are singular solutions. Yes. So for Clairo, we would. Anyway, let, let's check that. Yes, always check it. Right, right. So what is it? Well, x equals minus f prime of t, which is negative t. Y equals f of t minus t f prime of t. So that's negative half t squared. So, if we wanted to, um, we could actually write y equals negative one-half, and then since x is negative t, I can say t is negative x, so that there's this weird oddball solution, negative one-half x squared, that also... works. Okay. So, paint a picture. This is, you know, family of lines that, you know, if you graph all satisfy the differential equation, and then um, somehow this parabola also works. And, and, uh, but that's the same thing, right? Yes. Yeah. Because this is the same, this creates.